Thank you so much, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, my conservative family, thank you very much for that warm welcome, and thank you, Denis, for such a kind introduction. Denis, vous êtes un ami merveilleux, et vous avez été un excellent chef adjoint. Ladies and gentlemen, Denis LaBelle. And thank you to JP, of course. Thank you for your love, your support. And he was up here so long, I wasn't sure if he was running or not. <laughs> but JP has been my rock through all of this, and we have had so much fun. It's been an adventure. Thank you, JP, for everything. But finally, day 569 is here. So we're moving out of everybody's famous, favorite Airbnb, Stornoway. <laughs> We've had a week or so of packing and goodbyes. And I have to tell you, I'm still finding Stockwell Day stuff in the closets. <laughs> and a lot of well wishes. This will be my last time in public speaking as the leader of the Conservative Party of Canada. And there is nowhere that I'd rather be than here with all of you. Thank you. Without a doubt. You, you, all of you are the heartbeat of this great party. And you remind me of exactly why we all work so hard. You know, I think back to the six million Canadians that voted for us in 2015. They don't all hold Conservative Party of Canada memberships, but they are who we are here for tonight. I think of all the single moms out there that work two jobs, but they can't afford to pay their power bill. I think of the young people who are just starting out and they're burdened with student debt. These are ordinary, hardworking people who look to us to defend their interests and their values. Yes, six million Canadians voted for our party because they believed in us. But ultimately, it wasn't enough. Now, the way I see it, when faced with defeat, we had two options. We could have retreated, waved the white flag, licked our wounds, and wallowed in excuses. But what do you think those six million people who are counting on us would think of that? Mais l'autre option est celle que j'ai toujours ceux qui nous allions choisi. On sort plus déterminé que jamais à réussir. But our other option, and it's the one that I always knew that we would take, we emerged more determined than ever to succeed. We hit the ground running and we became the best opposition to liberal arrogance this country has ever seen. You know, and wow, there's a lot to oppose. There's a lot to oppose, my friends. After promising Canadians that they had changed, it turns out that they're the same old liberals. Same old liberals, big surprise. Millions and millions of Canadians are waking up to the realization that just maybe Justin Trudeau doesn't have their best interests at heart, that his priorities don't sound much like their priorities. In less than two years, we've seen broken promises, mountains of debt, out of control spending on lavish office renovations, ministers who hold private cash for access fundraisers, a minister, a minister who claimed that he was the architect of one of NATO's largest military operations in Afghanistan. When he wasn't, when he wasn't, what does this tell us about the Liberals? The same thing that we've always known, that they are arrogant, entitled, and out of touch. Here. They are. But you know what? It's a mindset that runs from the party's backbench all the way to the Prime Minister's office. You know, I always joke, 
when we had the Harper PMO, people used to say in the Harper PMO there was kids in short pants. Well, that might not have been so bad, because now we've got Trudeau and all his kids in Gucci pants. <laughs> now we have a prime minister who sees nothing wrong with rubbing elbows with billionaires who want access to government contracts. A prime minister who thinks that it's fine to charge $125,000 for his family's vacation to a private island in the Bahamas. A prime minister who has no issue spending nearly $30,000 of taxpayer money on Broadway tickets. Friends, you would be hard pressed to think of a prime minister further removed from the experience of everyday Canadians than Justin Trudeau. So that's why, more than ever, Canadians need us to be a voice for the taxpayer and the voice for everyday, hardworking Canadians. And you know, you know what? The thing is, Canadians actually don't ask for much. They actually don't. They want a good paying job that allows them to care for their families. They want to raise their kids in a place, in a community where it's okay for them to go out and play. And while they don't mind paying their fair share of taxes, they'd like to end the month with a little bit of money in their pockets. And after promising to not raise taxes, the Liberals are nickel and diming Canadians to death. They have raised taxes on families, on students, on seniors, on businesses, your kids' hockey, arts classes, music lessons, all of it's more expensive. The Liberals even took away the break that families get for taking the bus. But you know what? <laughs> but it gets worse. It gets worse. Just imagine, after a long day, you've had a long day at work, you decide to go to the bar with your friends for a glass of wine or a beer. The Liberals are taxing that. And you're res <laughs> especially the wine and beer. <laughs> and you're responsible, you're a responsible guy or girl, so you take an Uber home. They're taxing that. They are literally, literally taxing your Saturday night. They, they are nickel and diming Canadians to death. And you know what, Canadians are noticing. And that means that we are doing our job. We've exposed the billions of dollars in new Liberal debt. We've laid bare the truth about the Liberals' cash grab of a carbon tax. More money for the Liberals and does nothing to reduce pollution. And when Justin Trudeau wanted to change what our vote means in this country, we fought back and we said, no way, not without a referendum. On, Justin. What happened to the sunny ways? What happened? I keep asking. Where's that liberal sunshine? We have worked incredibly hard and every day our members of parliament go to work thinking of the millions of Canadians who are waking up to the realization that Justin Trudeau's fake photobombs are not going to put food on the table. We are exposing the liberals for who they are. They're in it for themselves. And we're succeeding. You know why? You know why? Because we have the hardest working, most principled, most compassionate group of women and men in our Conservative Caucus, and I am so honored to work with them. They're amazing, amazing. We're everything. They are everything to us. Can I please ask them to stand and could you please give them a round of applause? I know many of them are here. I 
I'm literally in awe of them every day getting to work with them and seeing them thrive. Now, let me also just say something else while I have the floor, because you know it's important to me and I know it's important to all of you. Our caucus and our party is stronger with capable, strong, talented women standing with us. <laughs> but let me also say this, let me also say this. We don't elevate or promote women to fill a quota. We do it because women have what it takes. They have what it takes. Our women compete and they win. Never forget, friends, as a movement and as a party, we've worked hard since our founding to advance the rights of women, not just in Canada, but around the world. And never forget, we're the party of the first female cabinet minister and, of course, the first female prime minister. And it was Prime Minister Harper who recognized Malala Yousafzai for her heroic, heroic challenge of the Taliban with the offer of honorary Canadian citizenship. We worked hard to found the International Day of the Girl, which has become a global movement promoting the needs of girls all around the world, and particularly in the developing world. And over the... <laughs> thank you. And over the last year and a half, our conservative opposition has fought for the rights of the most oppressed and vulnerable women in the world, literally. Our advocacy forced the government to recognize the sexual enslavement of Yazidi women and girls by ISIS and provide them with safety and refuge in Canada. And I've been very proud to see the bipartisan, multi-partisan support for the JUST Act to help protect victims of sexual assault. Nous avons, mes amis, nous avons maintenant une équipe conservatrice intelligente et prête à avancer. And now we have a smart, compassionate, battle-tested conservative team that is a very real alternative to a liberal government that is increasingly arrogant, entitled, and out of touch. And while I have the chance, I want to just say a thank you to all of you for your kind words over the last week after announcing my departure from politics. There's been a lot of generous things said, but I have to tell you there's just one quote one thing that captures how I hope I'm remembered as an MP and as the interim leader in particular. And this quote came from one of our MPs. And he said, her role was made for her. She could be compassionate when she needed to, but if she needed to, she would kick Trudeau in the balls. Yes, someone said that and someone printed it in the National Post. And now I just said it on TV, but what's the worst that can happen? Are you guys going to fire me? <laughs> oh, friends, I want to tell you, I leave incredibly optimistic about the party's future. Thanks to all of you, thanks to all of you, we have money in the bank. In fact, we have a, quite a bit of it. We've beat the Liberals three times over in donations to our movement in the last... <laughs> and 
And for the first time in years, there are more Canadians considering voting Conservative than not. We've set a new record for membership sales. Amazing. We now, we now have over a quarter of a million members, an increase of more than 150,000 since the beginning of January. And those, yes. <laughs> and those are paid members, not free like the Liberals. <laughs> and tonight, tonight is a big night. Tonight our members are going to choose the woman or man who's going to lead the way for the first time since the election of Stephen Harper to the leadership of this nationwide movement. It's been an unbelievable pleasure for me to be your leader for the last 18 months. And I can tell you this, this incredible Conservative Party of Canada is principled, it is firm, and it is focused. Il se soit nos membres vont choisir l'homme ou la femme qui va montrer le voie pour la première fois depuis l'élection de Stephen Harper comme chef de ce mouvement national. There is no doubt, friends, that our new leader will inherit a proud legacy. They will also inherit a caucus that is united, energized, and determined. I am incredibly proud of what we've accomplished together since the election. I'm reminded every day when we go up against Justin Trudeau in question period, well, at least when he shows up in question period, <laughs> why I'm so proud to be a Tory. And I heard it in the speeches last night from all of our candidates. You know, it doesn't matter if you're a social conservative or a libertarian or a fiscal hawk. Really, what we heard from all of our candidates is the most basic level, it's about our belief in people. Our belief in people. That's what unites us in this great party. So it doesn't matter if you're married or single or gay or straight or a senior or a student or a hipster or a server. It doesn't matter if you're a hipster or a truck driver, a doctor or a lawyer, although we might draw the line at lawyers. We're thinking about that. <laughs> but as a Tory, we understand that our party puts its belief in people's potential ahead of any belief in government. You know, we all say, we heard it last night from our candidates. Liberals think that every problem is solved by government. But what does that mean? It actually means that they have more faith in government to solve the big challenges of this great nation. But we choose to place our belief in the individual potential of every single Canadian. That's the difference. So, so as Conservatives, we want smaller government, we want more freedom, we want to leave more money in the pockets of those who earn it. Why? It's not because we love money, it's because we have faith in people to make the best decisions for their families, their businesses, and their communities. And it's a message... <laughs> it's a message of empowerment that resonates with all of us, and it's what unites us as a party. Friends, tonight, we're proudly starting a new chapter. To all the candidates in this race, thank you. Thank you for everything you've done for the party over the last 18 months. You've been amazing. Now, regardless of who wins, you should all be proud of your campaigns. We have seen principled positions held and ideas debated with passion and good humor. And it's important to remember that at this moment, no matter who wins, our leader will undoubtedly spend time learning and listening and working. I did, 
Stephen Harper did, and so did our predecessors. And I'm going to share with you what Stephen Harper said to us in our caucus just before we voted for our interim leader. He said, the measure of a good leader is also how they treat their opponents in defeat. Never forget that. That's a message to all the candidates. Finalement, finalement, à vous tous, une dernière pensée. Après ce soir, nous allons nous réunir comme une famille. Les principes que nous partageons tous sont beaucoup plus importants que les propositions faites au beau milieu d'une campagne. So finally, to all of you, one final thought. The values that we share are so much more important than the proposals made in the heat of any campaign. Those values are made powerful because they are how regular Canadians across this country live their lives every single day. Caring for our families, showing compassion for our neighbors, hard work, living within our means. When we rally around those values and speak with one voice, there is no limit to what we can achieve together. So we're looking forward to 2019, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you, we are. It's going to be great. And when I'm asked, when I'm asked to describe the Conservative Party of Canada in 2017, my answer is easy. We are strong, focused, and united, and we know Justin Trudeau can be beaten. And we're ready. We know Justin Trudeau can be beaten, and we are ready to win in 2019. Merci beaucoup. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.